Research shows that communities of color, indigenous communities, and low-income communities are being disproportionately impacted by the health burden of air pollution. The top map shows the PM 2.5 levels across the United States, a measurement for a particulate matter that is most harmful to human health, with darkest blue representing the highest air pollution. The bottom map shows the population of people of color, with darkest pink representing the highest rates. So the first goal of our analysis is to find out where the relationship between air pollution and population of people of color is strongest. Then we'll explore how the future might look like by forecasting the PM 2.5 data to the year 2025. And finally, we want to see how this relationship will change based on the forecast. This will help us prioritize where to take action. To start, we use the Local Bivariate Relationships tool, a spatial statistics that quantify where the relationship is strongest and most meaningful. The pink and orange color here represent significant positive relationships, meaning as the population of people of color goes up, so does exposure to air pollution. For instance, the Central Valley of California, where we see large migrant worker population combined with pollution pathways. These areas represent inequities that we want to reduce in the future. Next, we'll forecast the PM 2.5 data using the new time series forecasting toolset. We want to go from a historic time series at each location to a forecast nine years out. The toolset provides three different ways to forecast. The curve fit method is best for time series following these common parametric curves. The exponential smoothing and random forest-based approach are for complex time series that have seasons and trends. Here's the result of applying exponential smoothing on the PM 2.5 data. The pop-up shows us the original value in blue, the fitted and the forecasted value in orange. We can also check the confidence interval to get a sense of how reliable the forecast is. But there is no magic bullet for applying this forecast throughout the entire study area. What works in one place does not necessarily work for somewhere else. So after we have applied all the three forecast methods to the data, we can run the Evaluate Forecast by Location tool to find the optimal forecast at each location. The output is a hybrid prediction where each location is forecasted using the best approach. In addition to mapping the forecasted values, we can also symbolize this map using the forecast method chosen at each location. We can see swaths of the country where curve fit is chosen in shades of orange, indicating those areas follow these common parametric curves. While other locations, like California, mainly in purple, predominantly using random forest as the best approach, suggesting for more complex time series patterns there. And finally, we can see how the relationship between air pollution and the population of people of color will change based on the forecast. By putting the local bivariate relationship map of 2010 on the top and 2025 at the bottom, we see less pink and orange color in the year 2025, suggesting that we are moving in the right direction. But there will be still inequities, and this map tells us where they're expected to be so that we can prioritize where to take action. And we can use spatial analysis to continue exploring this complex issue for all the communities being disproportionately impacted. Using ArcGIS Pro R0 Spatial Data Science Workstation and the new spatial approaches that we've built into the time series forecasting tools, we can solve all sorts of complex problems across both space and time. <laughs>